Hi guys, it's the Island Girl and I'm back with another reaction video for you today. And today I'm reacting to the life-changing journey of being selected as a Gurkha. And this is what, this I found this on um, Force TV. This came in highly recommended from JJ, Peter Day, Brit, Brit Box, Brit, James, Sam, and so many others. Guys, um, I have no clue who the Gurkhas are, all right? Uh, when I did this video a week ago, that's when I heard the name for the first time and my curiosity would not let me down. So I had to ask in the video that I did about the um, medal, the Victoria Cross. So that's how I came across this and my wonderful family members in the comment section was like, Island Girl, you need to check this out, all right? Winchy one also recommend this one as well. So let's get into this video. If you're new to my channel, it's the first time here. Come on in, wrap back, put a smile on your face and enjoy. To all my regulars, my schmegglers, my day ones, my sweetie pies, my sweetie poos, come on in, wrap back, put that smile on your face and enjoy. Don't forget to go in the comment section. Tell me what you like me to react to next because it will be done. Hit the like button. All right, let me stop talking. Curiosity kill the cat. Let's <laughs> let's get into this video. Here we go. Huh? This is Gurkha class of 2019. Four hundred trainee soldiers, the biggest intake to set foot in the UK in over 30 years. Most are just teenagers, and their journey began thousands of miles from here. Wow. Nepal. It's a small nation wedged between India and China, the mighty Himalayas running down its spine. It remains one of the world's poorest and least developed countries, and for 200 years, the British Army have recruited some of its strongest young men with the blessing of... Over 200 years? That's a long time. Strongest young men? Okay, how did this get started? Let me know in the comment section. Wow. ...of the Nepalese. Every year, 10,000 apply to join, pledging to fight and potentially die for a country and a queen on the other side of the world. Wow. 10,000. It's a friendship like no other, a British foreign legion over 200 years old. With the UK's crisis in recruitment, we need them more than ever. But how do you find the very best Gurkhas? How do the British Army protect them from the corruption so rife in Nepal? And once in, is it all they dreamed of? Gurkha Company! Well, we're about to find out. It sounds so serious like they are amazing at what they do and I haven't heard anything as yet. But it's been going on for so long, so how did they become a part of the British Army? That I'd like to find out as well. Let's continue. The first stage of selection for the British Army takes place each year in September. One in the west of Nepal in Pokhara, and one in the east, here in hot, sticky Duran. Young men from all around get up in the early hours and travel miles to be here for a chance of a job in the British Army. Mm. Uh, today we got uh, one hilly district, that's Tankuta, and uh, we got five uh, Tarai districts. Uh, normally, uh, their farming background, especially in Tarai district, their farming backgrounds, oh. and. Uh, Hilly district also, also farming background, but nowadays uh, most of the boys from the hills uh, do come down to the cities, near the cities, uh, for a better education, better life, or probably better facilities as well. Yeah. Oh, wow. This year, the recruiting campaign was bigger than ever before. They advertised on every one of Nepal's 72 radio stations and the recruiting officers, retired Gurkhas known as Gullawalas, travelled to all corners of the country, gathering young men together on football pitches, tennis courts and cafes. 
They modernised their website. Potential recruits, known as PRs, could even email Deputy Head of Recruiting Major Sandy Nightingale personally. And they did. I do get quite a few emails from PRs asking some quite various questions from are my teeth OK with photographic evidence uh, to, uh, you know, um, can women join this year? GC That's a very interesting one because guess what, guys? I've noticed I've never, I haven't seen any females so far. So are women able to join or it's a no-no where that is concerned, where the Gurkhas are concerned? This... <laughs> My interest, this just grabs my attention. I don't know what I'm getting myself. Laggy, Hamid, do you say Jana? What we're uh, trying to do is dispel the myth that uh, only certain uh, Nepalis can join the British Army. It's still amazing to me that people think it's only certain castes. People think that you have to be rich. People think all kinds of, of things that are all wrong. Wow. We will take anyone who's good enough. We make sure there's a British officer on every single stand as well. Just so no one could think, oh, I'm a Gurung, he's a Rai. Uh, you know, maybe he's going to give me a worse mark. Oh, wow. There are 125 castes or ethnic groups throughout Nepal, and historically, Gurkhas came from just four of these groups. 100 and, and, and Gurkhas only come from four. Gurkhas, I know I just paused, guys, but this information overall is just fascinating to hear. Over the years, the army has succeeded in reaching more diverse sectors of society, in part thanks to its dedicated team of Gullawallas who go out in tireless search of the best young men. This year's newest and most baby Gullawalla, aged just 45, made a dramatic entrance, bringing in record numbers from the east. Oh, wow. wow, I'm really enjoying my job. Yes, because I want to do something for the, my country, the British Army. Everybody know in the world, you know, this is the one of the best army in the world. Oh, wow. we'll all over Due to the searing heat, the 800 metre run has become the first test of the day and the locals have turned out to cheer the boys on. Or perhaps eye up the competition. Stand by. Go! With the futures of so many potential recruits resting on the selection process, there is no room for human error. Man. Every single score that's written down gets checked by someone else. Oh. And I personally will check every single score of those who are selected. Then the Chief of Staff will check every single score of those who are selected. In order to understand fairness, you have to understand Nepali society generally. Um, Nepal is a country where people pay money to get just about everything. And therefore, for us to kind of display ourselves as being free, fair and transparent, we have to go to huge lengths to, to convince people that that's the case. We'll tell them not to pay money to anyone to get into the British Army. The first exam is maths. Similarly, in the exam hall, every question must be unique. By 3 p.m., the test paper will be in the local bazaar, being sold for a few rupees. Well, writing the papers um, is extremely difficult. We do keep them under um, strict lock and key, and, um, and then in order to generate those papers, to proofread those papers, to proofread them again and again, because if there are any dramas on the day, it is unfortunately a cohort of young boys who are going to suffer, and we do not want that to happen. That is crazy. They have to go through so much. And then they're saying each exam paper has to be unique. I can understand why they do that. So there's no cheating can take place. Everybody have their own thing going on. So they have to focus on what they're doing. Not only that, you're telling me that they think they can pay to get in? Wow, this is... This is just... Mm. One focus of this year's campaign has been to filter out potential problems early to avoid wasting recruits' efforts, emotions and money. Major ah. Nightingale has introduced a new test to regional selection. Hyperextending elbows, some call it noodle arm, is an immediate fail, so this is now checked early. Throughout the day, if the recruits fall short on anything, they head straight to the dreaded Chautari and then home. Oh, wow. These boys will give everything to try and uh, to try and get into the British Army. Mm. I'm not saying that a British soldier is not equally motivated to join the British Army, but the difference with these guys is their whole families put pressure on them to join the British Army. If they get into the British Army, their whole family's life will change forever. Um, and that's the con. Oh, okay, okay. So I get it. Why there's so many persons? Because it's such a poor country, and yet when one get in. 
the family is depending on that person. So, so much pressure is put onto each individual that put, man, can you imagine the pressure of just going there, being each, each stage, you're just hoping and praying that everything is okay because you're going to make that major difference in your family life, that whole burden is on your shoulder, but at the same time, you're kind of ecstatic if you if you do get through because you know that you're the one who make your family take your family out of a a, a, a terrible situation context that we're working with one four five six nischal yes, one four six zero prajwal yes, one four six eight pradeep kumar yes, one four seven zero for some of today's young men the news is devastating one four nine nine sugam one five zero zero sunil the recruiting staff are very protective of them. They won't allow anyone to speak to the potential recruits. Today is too important. Man. The chosen few will be invited back to selection in January, where they'll compete for one of just a few hundred places. Only 4% of the 10,000 applicants will make it. What? So they're going to have to compete again for another slot? And sh did she just say four percent out of so many people gets the opportunity man mm. Gurkhas have been part of the British military for over 200 years ever since the Anglo-Nepalese war when the British were so impressed by the fighting skills of their enemy they struck a deal to recruit them when the war was over. Since then, they've become ah. one of the most feared units of the British forces and fought in every major conflict. The politest of soldiers. So you're telling me that their fighting skill is top notch, above a cut, a cut above the rest. That is just awesome. You heard what she said? Their fighting, they were so impressed. That means they know how to throw down then. All right then. The most ferocious of fighters. Can today's recruits uphold a reputation centuries old? Wow. South of the Himalayas and west of Kathmandu lies Pokhara, Nepal's second largest city. Thank you for flying with the airlines. Namaste. It's the gateway to the Annapurna mountain range a favourite spot for trekkers. But it's also home to final selection for the British Gurkhas. It's here that the recruiting oh, wow. team must choose once and for all who will become the future Nepali warriors. They've already been selected as the best of the best from their regions. Now they must undergo even more rigorous tests, not least of which is the infamous Doko race. The race involves running up a mountain in the Himalayan foothills with 25 kilos of sand in a basket strapped around the forehead. It is our identity uh, as, as a Gurkha uh, and carry a Doku. Like uh, we got the British Allied Force, like the Para, they got their, their own, own specific training. Like the commandos, they have got their own uh, selection and this is unique for the Gurkhas. The day before, the sand is meticulously weighed and the doko baskets carefully laid out. Each recruit must prepare his own. In case of raining, they are, put, they are covering their blanket by plastic. In case of rain, they will be uh, heavier than usual weight. And why the blanket? A blanket because uh, <coughs> this one is quite rough, so they may scratch their skin at their back. How hard is the doko race? So, hold on. They have to pack their own amount of sand that they're going to carry. And they're carrying it with their head and notice them running with a basket. No, sir. You guys are a different breed. It is the doko race? Mm, it is very hard. Mm -hmm. very, very hard. Very hard. Wow. The doko race was only introduced in 1989. Before that, most of the young men grew up in the mountains and did this daily. There was no need for a test. What? At 5.45 a.m., the potential recruits leave camp, gather their doko baskets, and when enough light has risen... Hello, finishing point. This is start point, over. ...the race begins. 
It is tough uh, as a nature of the event uh, because it is uphill from start to the end. So my tips for the boys is do not give up. Keep going and never look up. If you look up, obviously, your weight pull you to, towards the ground and pull you back. So always bend down and keep you know, going up. This last run was quite dozy because of the weather. Uh, it rained the whole night and boys were wet this morning and their doko was wet. The terrain it's itself is it's difficult, uh, uphill, uh, the steps, um, and stones and boulders, um, and the puddles. No time for water stops. The recruits must complete the course in 46 minutes. If they fail, they leave selection immediately. What? 46 minutes. They're going uphill. They have the basket with the sun around their head strictly uphill can you imagine that they have to keep that on their head going as fast as they can skipping all water stop because they have a time for it well they'll skip it if they're low on time and if you don't make it through so it doesn't matter if you come through eventually it's just that you have to do it in a time frame and if you can't do it in the time frame you're literally out Water pressure. At the top, it's time for a well-earned breakfast and relief at last. Mm. The descent is less painful, the boys singing as they go. Selection is almost complete. It won't be long now until they know what their future will hold. Wow. It's the night before results day for the potential recruits or PRs from the west of Nepal. And to ease the nerves, the recruiting staff have suggested they put on a show. Western Idol delights the judging panel. It's clear that West's got talent. At least they're doing something to ease their nerve from all the pressures of waiting for the result on the next day. I can understand that, but she's it's nerving, just just the way. The next morning, it's a different story. The young men must now say their goodbyes. If successful, they're unlikely to see their newfound friends again. Many will be heading home. In a few moments' time, they'll be invited into a room one by one and told their fate. Mm. We see a massive spectrum of Nepali society. You know, we have people from very, very poor backgrounds who's maybe who are orphans. You see everything in that room, which is why we don't allow you guys to go in there. It means so much to them to get in because they've, a lot of them might have gambled everything on this. Uh, and, wow. you know, it's quite a, a raw environment, actually. Um. Yeah, hard for you emotionally. Yeah, well, I think it's, well, everyone, really. You know, we, we are obviously emotionally invested. It's impossible not to be. I, I love that he has a heart. He has empathy, and he feels for these, these young men, whether they get through or not. And that right there can tell that he's an amazing person, an, an amazing individual. I use that to judge him based on how he feels for them, because he knows what they had to put forth to get there and if they don't get through he knows what they're going back to so you know wow the minutes tick by painfully the staff of gurkha company from katrick survey from above if the recruits are successful they will bound up the stairs at a million miles an hour before anyone can change their minds there, they will become part of the British Army, and it's over to Gurkha Company mm. to turn them into soldiers. Amongst the candidates mm. is 20-year-old Madhav Khaki. This is his fourth and final attempt, and his last chance to get in before he turns 21 and can no longer apply. Every Hold on. I know I just was. So, when you get to 21, you cannot apply? Isn't that something? So he gets all the chances, 
he got this is fourth he's 20 so that means they start from 16. so why why is the cutoff age so young that's one of my question why is the cutoff age so young 21 they're still young they're still vibrant they still have a lot of energy and vibrancy and life left to go why so early uh, let me know in the comment section interesting everyone is nervous outside the gate the families wait willing their sons oh. not to appear through the railings for those who've been unsuccessful there is next year if they are next under 21 year. and can afford to make this journey again if not mm. life will have to be very different as Madhav Khaki appears through the door, it looks to be good news. I'm feeling very excited and I mean, I'm feeling like I'm in the moon. So it's my dream became true. So I'm feeling very happy. No one in my family, they are in the army. I mean, I'm the first guy in the British army right now. You must feel so proud. Yeah, awesome. this, this man. You're in the British army, how does yeah. it feel? <laughs> it's my happiest moment of my life. Yes. Oh, it's my dream come true, ma'am. Have you tried before? Yes, ma'am. This is my second dream, ma'am. Yeah. And you, you remember what it felt like last year, so this must be so special. Yes, I'm very happy, ma'am. Hello, Dai. The first thing the boys are allowed to do is phone home. We give uh, the boys four phone calls throughout the selection process. So after each stage, so after the medical, after the physical, after the education, and when they're selected, they get a phone call. And that's basically so the, their parents hear from them first, so no one else can yeah. sort of play games and say, oh, your son's nearly there, but I'll, I'll get him in if you give me some money. So it's to prevent that kind of thing. Oh. And of course, it's nice that their parents hear them first. It's always a little bit yeah, sad when impressed. the parents don't pick up <laughs> and they're waiting... Uh, waiting agonizingly for their parents to answer the phone. That is so amazing. <laughs> Guys, I don't, I'm tearing up. <laughs> that is so nice. Can you imagine the, oh, the excitement? That you, don't, you don't even know what to do with yourself. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> oh man, I feel so happy for them. Hello, Mama. Oh, body mm. lag, eh? I just called my father. He's just crying on the other side of the phone. Um, I just... Different. They're so happy, as I know. Yeah. With their new recruits assembled, Gurkha Company waste no time. The boys' own clothes will now be sent back to their families. They'll need a whole new wardrobe in the British Army. They have to get all their kit and equipment, so it's like a, a big Christmas day. So as you can see on the table, they are the Christmas father, and then they are getting a big a bunch of bag. Buried green. We don't know who going to be selected, and we don't know the sizes. So now we'll take them to the room, okay. and if there's a big or small, we try to sort it out within the group. It's like a big swapping session. Oh, OK. Uh, yes. And inevitably, all the big guys will end up with a small kit. Yeah, it will happen, yeah. Next up, a trip to the barber and the tailor. Okay. You feel like you are a part of an army uh, without wearing this suit, so you're not, no longer civilian. What was the hardest yeah. part of selection for you? For, for me, uh, it was a uh, 2400 meter running race, BFT, because uh, as since I'm a city, since I'm a grown up all in the city, I haven't run that much. So for me to oh. pass only, it was very hard, but I have trained hard with my friend, then uh, I have uh, succeeded and passed. The new recruits are inoculated, fitted for their Virtus body armor, and measured for their civvy outfits known as the Mufti. Mm. Camp quickly becomes a wash with ironing boards and boot polish, and mirror space is very much at a premium. The recruits keep none of their old belongings. Everything is new. Wow. Gurkha tie. This is a special tie. Uh, you can't find. I don't think you can find it in. in the we cannot buy it. Or we you, cannot buy it. Yeah, it's a specially so. designed tie for Gurkhas. And so it's yeah. used only on special occasions. Nice. I think. <laughs>
shampoo. Soaps. We have our <laughs> razor kits. Easily nice. the muggers nice. uh, don't you really have don't really grow moustache. Yeah, Mongolians not really don't have beard or moustache. Like, oh, it's very rare in our case, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. The exciting Learn I am because son is always better than father because of the time they improve. Yeah. So this intake will be better than last intake straight away. Son is always Learning better process than father. Each time. My son will yep. be better than me Learning. straight away. What about you? What is it? I the hair. I make sure I make sure I cross the hair. One of the most important new challenges this week is drill lesson one. In a few days' time, they must parade in front of dignitaries and their families, and everyone wants it to be perfect. Make sure front rank, make sure you have a 45 degree angle. Make sure you have a 45 degree angle. Then you have a company, you have a position of attention. Okay, Gorka Company! It's all about the legacy in our tradition. Uh, 15 years ago, I was like them. Uh, and then wow. one of my section commander, his name is Captain Bakta Sirsen. I am his legacy. So he teaches me everything, how to survive, how to do the things in army. And I'm doing the same thing to these boys. So maybe after a few years later, so one of these boys will stand in front of this place. And then probably he will say the same. The legacy will go on and on, on and on but they will always remember us and I, we will also remember them. Yep. The recruits have just a week to get to grips with the basics before they fly to the UK. Just a week to get to the basics before they move on. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine how proud those family members feel that their child got in, that that child is going to make a difference in their family and put their family in a better position? Not only that, I love how they take the time out to train them on how to groom themselves, so how they should wear their uniform, how to iron, everything. Everything is so meticulous. It is crazy how they get everything done in so a short space of time so you can tell that it's all about discipline and they have because they want it so much they're eager and ready to learn to the uk there's a lot to learn and they'll need their new comrades yeah. their numeries to help them out every step of the way look at that Instructors from Gurkha Company time. in Yorkshire's Catrick Garrison await the arrival of their new recruits. Oh yes, everyone is looking forward for this day. Because Gurkha Company would have been quite quiet, won't it? It is, yeah. It is quite quiet when the boys are not in the camp around and then we just uh, feel lonely when the boys are not in. Aww. Soon there enough they, they appear safe into this foreign land, which from now on will be their home. It's really unknown area when, when you come into uh, the UK. Uh, I, when I recall my memories, it's uh, exciting as well as a bit daunting as well. You don't know what's coming up. So a bit excited. Uh, and on the other hand, you're away from your families as well. So uh, yeah. you've got lots of emotion uh, in, in your mind going through. It's been a long journey to get here. Years of training, months of tests, examinations and interviews. But this is only the beginning. They will fight for this country and this queen now. A job that will change their own future and the fortunes of their families. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe to our channel Wow, guys, that was amazing to watch. That was beautiful. Just, just hearing their journey and what they have to go through just to get to the point that they are. But as I watch, I can see why they are selected. They're fierce. They're good at what they do. They, the, the dedication, the loyalty is just amazing. And their discipline is something else.
And listen, I've never heard of a group. I've I've never heard of the Gurkhas before. Like I said, it's my first time hearing about them. But they, in my eyes, seem like some superhuman based on how they, the, the training that they go through. And for such a young age. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. I love you guys. Keep those requests coming in the comment section because you don't know your island girl got you. That's it from us. We're heading out of here. What? Cool. It's cool. <laughs> love you guys. And I'll definitely catch you guys in another video. Bye.